Hi everyone, welcome back to the project management processes in the project management body of knowledge. This one in particular we're looking at is creating the work breakdown structure or WBS. You'll see this come up a lot in your project management career and basic, the basic idea of it is that we're breaking down the product scope that we've just defined from our requirements that we've just collected and we're breaking that down into activities, into how we can actually deliver the project according to those specifications. So as you can see, if we're going from top to bottom in the planning process group, we're really defining that scope uh, before we get into things like schedule and cost. So the, the scope will actually feed into what the cost is and what the schedule is going to look like as part of our project. So creating the, uh, the work breakdown structure is the process of subdividing project deliverables and work into smaller and more manageable components, usually activities that we can actually complete uh, to deliver our project. So the key benefit of this process is it provides a framework of what has to be delivered. An overview of creating the work breakdown structure is it's a hierarchical de decomposition. So we're decomposing uh, the, the high level requirements into smaller pieces of the total scope of work to be carried out by the project team to accomplish the project objectives. The work breakdown structure organizes and defines the total scope of the project and represents the work specified in the current and approved project scope statement which is a baselined document, don't forget, that needs to go through a change request if we have a change once it's been baselined. The planned work is contained within the lowest level of the work breakdown structure. So we might break it down to this level and then that might be broken down into more levels. So the actual planned work is in the lowest level. So that's what we're planning to complete uh, piece by piece. And these are called work packages. So these are the work packages that we'll be assigning to teams to complete and deliver. The work package can be used to group the activities where work is scheduled, estimated, monitored, and controlled, which means that we're feeding into all of our other project management processes by doing this. And in the context of the work breakdown structure, the work refers to work products or deliverables that are the result of activity, not the activity itself. So these might be pieces, pieces of the feature. So maybe not the actual, it, we're not saying that we're testing, but we're saying, what are we testing? So it's, a, it's this particular item that we're delivering. And then obviously we're gonna have uh, activities associated with that, but these are the work products or deliverables that are the result of that activity. Inputs, tools, and techniques and outputs. We've got the project management plan, the project documents, uh, EEFs and OPAs as inputs. And of course, it makes sense that we have our project management plan. One of the, that's one of the inputs in almost all of the processes that you will see once the project management plan has been created. Tools and techniques will need our expert judgment from, our, from any experts in areas and decomposition where we're decomposing or breaking down things into smaller and smaller levels. Outputs will be our scope baseline uh, and project documents updates. And of course, uh, the Create Work Breakdown Structure Act, uh, process itself has an input into the project management plan and project management documents that we'll see coming up. Let's look at the inputs in a little bit more detail. Project management plan. The component of the project management plan that we will need is the scope management plan. That's how, that's the, the actual process. So what is the process that we are going through to collect, collate uh, the requirements and break down those requirements into the activities. So that's, uh, that's what we can refer to in order to do this. That should have been done during plan scope management. And that just describes how we're going to go about this. Are we, who are we going to engage? What are the stakeholders? What are the processes that we'll need to do? Meetings or you know, uh, certain tools that we'll need to show, graphs or, or representation of data. The scope management plan documents how the WBS or work breakdown structure will be completed or created from the project scope statement. Project documents that we'll need as an input are our project scope statement that we've created previously, and then we'll be updating that at the end of this as well. And of course, the requirements documentation. So what were the original requirements from our customer and do they match the activities that we're going to be completing? Enterprise environmental factors. There might be industry specific work breakdown structure standards or even just standards within the organization that you're working. These industry specific standards may serve as an external reference uh, for a source of creating the work breakdown structure. So it's more of a how-to, are there standards that we need to go through? 
organizational process assets and templates might be policies, procedures and templates existing within the organization or that you've found uh, in your previous parts of your career or other organizations, project files from previous projects and lessons learned from previous projects that you can use to help break down this structure. Tools and techniques that we'll be using will be expert judgment. So who are the experts? Basically, we'll want experts, uh, expertise from individuals or groups with knowledge uh, of similar projects. So who's delivered something similar before? Uh, you know, maybe we've got one idea over here and the second idea over here, and they're very, very similar. So we can, uh, we can work with those people to, to figure out how they went about delivering their project, what they needed to do to break it down, and we can gather that expertise from them. Decomposition is a key tool and technique that we'll be using, and it's uh, used for dividing and subdividing the project scope and project deliverables into smaller, more manageable parts. So they're no longer high level, now they're much more manageable, smaller pieces. Decomposition of the total project work into work packages that we assign to our teams generally involves the following activities. Identifying and analyzing the deliverables and the related work, structuring and organizing the work breakdown structure itself, decomposing the upper level into the lower level components and verifying that the degree of decomposition and deliverables is appropriate. So have we broken it down into enough of a level that it could be assigned to someone to work on? Here is an example of a work breakdown structure decomposed down to the work, to the, uh, to the work packages themselves. As you can see, we start with the high level idea and ultimately end up with something that can be worked on. And the work breakdown structure creation approach can be a few different ways that you might see. You might have a top-down approach. You might, have, you might use work breakdown structure templates. There might be organizational specific guidelines. You, know, you might be working with a project management office that has existing guidelines or you know, just existing templates within the team that you're working with. A bottom-up approach can also be used if you're wanting to group uh, different subcomponents as your Let's say these are the activities down the bottom, but you want to group those um, to assign them to a particular team, maybe three people in a team, for example, and these are all grouped so that they can go over to that team. You're grouping the subcomponents in that way. Now, uh, the work breakdown structure, you might want to use phases of the project lifecycle to break it down, and here's an example. So you've got one project here, and these are the different phases of your project lifecycle. So project management, product uh, requirements, detailed design, constructing it, and uh, integrating and test uh, for this particular item. And so over those different phases of the project, now we're breaking it down into the things that they are delivering. So planning, meetings, administration, software user documentation, training program materials, and that sort of thing. So that's one way of breaking down the scope for your work breakdown structure. Another way is using the major deliverables. So you might have this particular major deliverable uh, and you're breaking it down into each different level, as you can see, level two, level three, level four. Uh, and so, you know, for each one, we've got supporting equipment and then the different work packages that might be delivered as part of supporting equipment. Now, of course, the outputs that we'll see are the scope baseline. So putting all of this information back into the scope baseline, which again is our uh, baseline document, and it needs to have a change request if we're changing it once it has been baseline. Um, and we'll usually baseline it after we've got the work breakdown structure and not before, because otherwise we'd have to go through a change request just to add this extra detail, which sometimes wouldn't make a lot of sense. Uh, but again, you might be using iter an iterative approach and that can be written into your project management plan as long as everyone is okay and agrees with that approach. Uh, you'll need the scope statement, work breakdown structure, and its associated work breakdown structure dictionary, which just has additional information on all of the activities, like who they're assigned to, uh, the acceptance criteria for those items and that sort of thing. And now once it's, once it's baselined, it can only be changed through a formal change control, control procedure, which we've seen. Um, and it's used for a basis of comparison on how we're going. So, you know, this is our scope that we've locked in. And now as the project is going along, how are we tracking? Are we, are we on track? Are we off track? How's the cost? How's the schedule? Uh, is the scope changing itself as well? Components of the scope baseline can include all of those items, work packages, planning packages, as well as the WBS dictionary, uh, WBS and work uh, project scope statement. 
Now the WBS Dictionary, this is uh, the document that provides the detailed deliverable activity and scheduling information about each component of the work breakdown structure. So it supports the work breakdown structure. As you know, we've broken it down from a high level into the actual work packages themselves, uh, depending on how many levels we need to go down to get to that work, uh, work package level. But now we can assign more information to those work packages. So we've got a code uh, of account identifier. How are we identifying it? Is it number 100, number 54, or whatever it is we want to use? A description of the work itself, assumptions and constraints, uh, the responsible organization, who's responsible for it, any milestones for completion, associated schedule activities, resources required to complete it, cost estimates, quality requirements, how do we know it's done and complete, acceptance criteria and the same, technical references and agreement information, who's agreed or signed this off. We might also have an output as a project document update where we're updating the assumptions log on any assumptions that have been made and the requirements documentation if that changes uh, for what we're including in our project. And that is the detail of creating the work breakdown structure in the project management body of knowledge. <laughs>